Today I want to show you how I replaced my newer Western Digital Red Drive on my QNAP unit with larger Seagate drives. Primarily as a result of the highly publicized concerns with SMR technology being used on the newer Western Digital drives. If you're interested in learning how the process is done and why I did it, then stay tuned for the rest of this video. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this channel for more tech reviews and tutorials. Before we get into the step-by-step -step process of actually replacing all my current drives with larger drives, I want to briefly cover the reason why I'm doing this upgrade. Earlier this year, there's been reports of people experiencing extra long rebuild times and other performance-related issues on their RAID systems. Um, since that time, there's been numerous videos and articles regarding the drive manufacturer's use of a technology called SMR which by itself isn't a bad thing. SMR stands for Shingled Magnetic Recording, which is basically overlapping data tracks, which provides greater density and lower cost. The downside of doing this is actually that you get a performance hit, especially in write applications. Um, this is certainly not an optimal condition for RAID. The most disturbing part of this was to find out that WD red drives, which are really common in NAS and uh, RAID storage systems, um, were suspected of using SMR. Now, initially, Western Digital was silent on which models used SMR, but ultimately they came forward to set the record straight and publish the list of which models are impacted. Now, I've been a red drive user for on my NAS units and my servers since their release. So this news certainly caught my attention because I was a little bit concerned. Because um, up until recently, or I'm actually going back for the entire time I've been using red drives, I really haven't had any issue. I've had one batch that actually went bad and that was four six terabyte drives about three years ago that all failed within 30 days of one another. But other than that, um, and that was an isolated case, other than that, I've had great luck with WD red drives, and I currently have about 24 of them in various systems. So the information that was coming out was truly a big concern because um, I wanted I didn't really understand and I wanted to know more about the impact and whether or not there was potential risk of data loss. As it turns out, there are two models of the W red drives: the original one, which ends in EFRX, and the new. Uh, I'll call it upgraded, but the new version that uses the SMR, and it really between it's really the two to six terabyte versions of the red drive, and they end with a part number EFAX. They're the ones that use the SMR technology. I reviewed my entire line of drives and found that only three of my 24 red drives were the type that used the SMR. Um, the rest of my drives were the older drives. That, unfortunately, for me anyway, all the three of these drives were in my primary NAS unit, which is my daily driver. So it did make me a little bit nervous. Um, now, just to be clear, I haven't seen any performance issues even during a rebuild. And in my mind, WD has a great reputation. It's, it's the, despite all of that, it still made me a little bit uncomfortable having these drives in my primary NAS. I'm not convinced that the overall concern for the average home user is major. Um, but given that this is in my primary NAS, I still opted to switch them out. Um, my plan was to reallocate these drives to my Unraid server, which doesn't use any Unraid, it doesn't use RAID. It's my understanding, at least as of now, that this issue in terms of performance isn't really a major problem um, unless you're running a NAS. And it's primarily aimed at the rebuild process. The uh, majority of the problems have been showing up with people using ZFS. So that said, I opted to replace my six terabyte drives, red drives, with larger eight terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf drives, which don't use SMR. Um, really, if it hadn't been for this issue and this concern coming up, um, whether it's valid or not, I probably would have just added another drive to my array and called it a day instead of starting over. So now that you understand why I'm replacing the drives with larger Seagates, let's go through how, how the process is done. The first step in this process is to do a disk replacement process. This is sort of a semi-automated process that allows you to change out your drives 
uh, one at a time so that your data is protected and you keep your data integrity. For purposes of this video, I'm going to show it to you quickly. Um, however, I'll post a link to another video I did that covers this process in more detail and step by step. But just to give you a quick overview, just to get this going. The first thing we're going to do is go into the storage manager and we're going to click on storage and snapshots. And we're going to click on manage. And then we're going to click on manage again and select replace disk one by one. Now you should see a list of all your disks in the array there. And it's basically as easy as selecting the first disk, hitting change. It's going to prompt you to remove it. You put in the replacement disk, even if it's larger, and in my case it's larger. And you go ahead and just give it about 5 to 10 minutes and it should start rebuilding on its own. You're going to do that for all three disks until you're completed. Now that we've completed the disk replacement process for all three of the disks in this array, it's now time to expand the storage volume so that it'll take advantage of the extra space of the larger drives. Otherwise, it still reads them as the smaller 6 terabyte drives. Though the process is kind of simple, it's not real obvious. Um, you kind of have to hunt around for what you're supposed to do. So I'm going to walk you through it real quick. You'll see how easy it is. Um, and then we'll go from there. So to get started, we're going to go back to the storage manager and we're going to hit storage snapshots again. And we're going to go back to manage. And again, click on manage again and go back to replace disk one by one. And this is where it gets a little confusing. And there you'll see a button that shows up that wasn't there before. It was grayed out before called expand capacity. And that's what you're going to select to basically have the array expand out to the full size of your new drives. So in my case, I put eight terabytes in. It's going to expand each drive out to, to eight terabytes and then resync the, the entire storage pool. So it's not a instantaneous thing, but what it's, it's just very simple to do. You just click expand capacity, click OK, and just wait. It'll probably take somewhere around the three or four hour range, you know, depending on your drives and the sizes and all that stuff. And um, when it's done, you'll be, you'll have your extra storage. As a point of reference, I want to see if I can do a file copy benchmark to see if there's any performance difference. I want to copy 142 gigs of files and I want to compare the WD Reds to the Iron Wolves. And I was kind of surprised at what I saw. So let me show you the benchmark and then we'll talk about the results a little bit. As you can see from the benchmark, um, the file copy performance has basically maintained itself above 300 megs a second. So now as we near the end of the benchmark, um, we'll see as it comes to a conclusion that the file copy actually completed in about 7 minutes and 44 seconds. 
So in comparison, let's run the WD Reds and show you the, the basically the difference that I received from that drive and we'll draw some conclusions here. So as you can see from the benchmark of the WD Reds, the fluctuation is quite a bit. I mean, it fluctuates from being slightly faster to significantly slower. So the swings in data throughput are much greater. It's probably something that we wouldn't necessarily see in real life, but the swings are, are significantly different. At the end of the day, what we're seeing here is the same data being copied with using the Western Digital Red Drives in about 9 minutes and 50 seconds, which is roughly around 28% slower. Now, if you calculate out the fact that the Ironwolf are a 7200 RPM drive and the Reds are 5400, what you're seeing is roughly about the same performance. So what that tells me is that this SMR issue is related primarily to rebuilds, you know, and potentially sustained writes. I think if you pound them hard enough, you might start to see a difference. But really in the everyday performance, what you're seeing is basically the same. We're seeing a, obviously much faster performance from the Iron Wolves, but you know, again, these are 7,200 RPM drives. I truly hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and so you'll be notified of any future content. Feel free to post any questions or comments below, and thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the next video.